welcome to Going Fishing with Brett Raymer from Tanked, episode number one. And here is your host, Brett. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, what's going on, JC? Uh, great to be here today. Got some amazing guests and uh, ready to talk uh, some shop. Why don't you talk about the cast of characters that are joining us today? So uh, today we got an amazing cast of characters. Uh, first off, we got my uh, really good friend and my manager, uh, Mike Scores, today. Hey, Mike, welcome. Hey, Thank hey, you for being here today. Nick. Pleasure to be here. Got Mike all the way in from New York. Never a trip that he doesn't miss in Las Vegas. Hey, Mike, come to Vegas. He's there in a second, right, Mike? <laughs> Damn right I am. That's right. And we got uh, my really good friend and one of the other stars of uh, Tanked. We got uh, my really good friend, Agnes. I won't even dare to pronounce your last name. Okay. <laughs> no one does, bro. Exactly. Um, I know that. Everyone assumes it's Agnes Raymer. Oh, really? They do? <laughs> they do? Yeah, everyone assumes. They do. Uh, your wife, but no, Agnes Vluchinski from Tanked. That's right. That's uh, right. One of the originals. It's good to be here. I'm excited to kind of join you again after a two-year hiatus almost. Um, I know. It's I great know. to have the group together. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, thank Absolutely. you for being here today. appreciate you guys coming in. It's we're, been a minute, yeah. We're excited to talk about the show yeah. Tanked. And in today's episode is kind of then and now. And, and, and let's get into it. So Animal Planet announced the end of the show in 2019. Yeah. So why did this highly successful show come to an end? So, you know, I never look at it as coming to an end, right? I always look at it as being on a hiatus because, you know, you never know. Right. Uh, the show ended. It never had a season finale. Um, but I, like I said, I don't think it, it, it actually ended. I would say more of a hiatus. You know, so right now we're uh, you never know what's going to happen in the future. I'm not saying it's going to come back or anything, but uh, I think that there was there was a couple of reasons why it ended. But for the most part, I think it was more we were on a hiatus. There was a lot of changes, a lot of different things going on uh, behind the scenes with cable and with, you know, how. Um, cable versus uh, streaming television worked. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they were getting ready to launch different platforms and do different things. And just at that time, it wasn't a right fit for us to, to come back. Now, Agnes, was that the last time you spoke to Brett is when the show came to an end? Yes. Yeah, so basically, I left in March of 19. And uh, we all needed a break. We really did. I had been, I started working at ATM in 2007. So I had been there for a long time uh, with these guys, you know, and uh, we, then we kicked off. We were while working and then we were doing a show. So that's a lot of years of just constantly running, 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 running. And eventually it did come to a, it was a hiatus, but we all needed a break. So I, I have spoken to Brett briefly. I mean, we text times. here and there, but no, I, I haven't seen anyone. So this is kind of this is fun to actually sit here and say, hey, what's going on? How's your life? You know? Uh, I'm also in a different spot in my life and things are going well and yeah. it would be great to reunite and just kind of have a reunion if, if we could. I think it would be fun. Yeah, you know, what people don't understand is that we had two jobs. Yeah. It wasn't one job. You know, shooting a reality show takes up a majority of your life mm -hmm. um, between travel, between, you know, fitting your family in, between then, you know, operating and running a business. It doesn't matter whether, you know, I'm the owner or whether Agnes is a sales rep. You know, she had her sales job to do and her, you know, estimate meeting along with filming you know along with traveling so you know we shot 156 episodes you know i mean let's just think about that right how many shows out there can say that they've shot 156 one hour episodes mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty amazing you know and i'm really proud of everybody that was a part of that but like she said it got to the point where family you know living and breathing and working and you know being with them takes a toll on everybody you know being around your friends even people that eventually took a toll on people you know so people don't see all that stuff because all they do is watch the amazing show tanked on tv and realize all the fun the laugh you know the humor and all the good times but they don't really see what goes on behind the scenes or they don't really see the hard work and the sweat and the tears and the arguments and the yelling and the screaming. So, you know, like Agnes said, I think all of that took a toll on everybody. And whether it was, you know, the network realized it or whether God realized it, I think it was just the time for us to just kind of take a break. You mentioned the family dynamics and I watched this show and I, it's a family show when I watch it because you, you are a family. But how did that dynamic start? Were you and Wade friends first or did Wade marry your sister first? How did that all begin? No, so it's a, it's a really good question. So when we moved here, uh, my dad moved here first and he wanted to have an aquarium uh, built. And uh, Wade started, actually my dad met Wade because he wanted to have this aquarium. Wade worked for another company. Um, he met Wade and then Wade started building his aquarium. He saw a picture of my sister. They started dating. And then my dad 
Wade wanted to, the business he was in, the guy was really old and, well, he was an older gentleman, I'm getting old myself, but he was a <laughs> older gentleman and he wanted to retire. So he said to Wade, hey, you know, you want to take over this business? And Wade was like, yeah. And my dad was going to put up the money and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And that's kind of how we got started. Uh, you know, that's how it basically got started at that point. It was, I remember it was me, Wade, and this guy, Mike Kamai. It was three of us. And we all sat in one office and that's how we got ATM started. So who came up with the idea of making this a TV show? Brett. He's Brett. He's, cause he, what was that? What was always the Well, joke, you know, Brett? so, I mean, it was funny because, so I used to watch Orange County Choppers. You know, when yes. reality TV became reality yeah. TV, those guys were the ones that really made reality TV famous. And I would watch it and I would turn around and I would go, that's really not how the families are supposed to be, right? The families are really more like married with children. I go, now that show is hysterical. Those guys, they, they abuse each other. They have fun. And I go, like, it's kind of like our family. So one day, we're all sitting in the office, and we used to have a bullpen office, I call it, because everybody would sit in the same office. There was yeah. five desks within the same office, and people used to come and in all the time. one bird in the center. Yeah, and one bird in the center. Well, we, yeah, we, we saw the, yeah. we see the birds. Oh, oh, yeah. At, at so the beginning, in, there was one. In, the office, yeah. in that office, there was literally... A big, remember? Yeah, the big I remember. Bird. Big bird. Wade needed to have the bird in the center, <laughs> squawking the entire time as we're trying to all work. Together. Right. And we have, you know, we have people that would come to visit us on the daily just to come hang out and mm -hmm. check out the bird, check out the fish. And we used to hear, <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. You guys should be on TV. You guys should be on TV. Not once, not twice, but I mean, a lot. And I would turn around. And I'm like, Orange County Choppers, TV, these guys keep saying it. I'm like, dude, I think we got a TV show here. And they're like, dude, that's the worst idea I ever heard. <laughs> Seriously, it was like the, it was the family joke, right? They, they used to go behind my back and be like, dude, that's the worst idea I ever heard. I can't believe you even thought of that. And I'm like, no, I'm seriously, I, we got a character. We got, look, my dad, we got Heather, Wade, Agnes. I go, we build crazy aquariums. I go, if Orange County Choppers can turn motorcycles into rocket ships, I go, we could turn aquariums into rocket ships. And then they're like, Okay, okay, that's still the dumbest idea I've ever heard, yeah, right? We did. We, so he said he's nuts. Yeah. I used to walk into Agnes's office and I go, "Okay, Agnes, you think nope, I'm kidding?" No, not into my office in the same room. Okay, and I, oh, that's right, right. That was made out you're of right, wood. You're right. Of wood. And I'd be like, "You see out there?" I go, "There are going to be people lining up out the door to come see us." And she was like, "Okay, yeah, sure they are." So. I had no idea what I was doing, right? So me and my friend Chuck, who sat next to me, and I was like, what do you want to do, Chuck? And he's like, I don't know. I go, dude, I got an idea. Let's go to the UNLV film school and meet with the professor. <laughs> so we go down to UNLV, we meet the professor, and we pitch him our idea. And he's like, wow, it's pretty interesting. He goes, I'm going to come and check it out. So he comes down, and he walks around the facility, and he goes, wow, guys. He goes, pretty amazing. He goes, I think you guys could have a show. He goes, but unfortunately, we don't have the budget to really help you, but I can give you what professors do best. I can give you some guidance and some education on how to get it done. So Chuck and I sat with him for like 30 minutes and basically his education was, see that yellow page is right there? Let your fingers do the walking, <laughs> call, call production companies and pitch them your idea. So I was like, that's it. You just got to get on the phone and just tell him. He's like, yeah, that's it. So I pitched and the first phone call went like this, right? Hi, this is uh, Brett Raymer. Uh, you know, I have this uh, great company and we want to have a reality show. We want to build amazing fish tanks. Hello? <laughs> Hello? It's, it's, it's so, true. you know, it went like that. It's I mean, true. for months and months and months, I was trying to pitch people about aquariums mm -hmm. and tell them what we could do. It and was and my, years. Years. I mean, it, it was years. But well, 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 first the pitch went for like nine months. Then I finally find this guy, and I remember his name. His name was Bud Brussman, and he had a bunch of shows on a car channel. Now, I'm so desperate at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. Somebody's going to do it. He's, he said, you know what? I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to come see you. So I said, all right, great. So he comes down, he sees us, and he walks through the facility, and he checks out the facility, and he turns around, and he goes, wow, you guys got something pretty special. And I'm like, that's what I've been trying to tell people. I'm like, all right, what can you do for me? He goes, well, I don't normally do this, but for you, it's going to be five grand. I yeah. said, okay, five grand. Okay, I go, we got a little bit of a problem. He goes, what's that? I said, I'm 49.99 short. <laughs> so he kind of laughed like you guys did, right? And he, I go, no, seriously, dude. I go, please, I'm begging you. You got to do this. You don't understand. This has been the family joke. If I could just get you to shoot it, th at least they'll believe in me. So he's like, okay, you know what? I believe in you. He goes, we're going to shoot it. So I said, all right one circumstance i said i've heard in the industry that even though you're paying for it that at the end of the day i'm going to bring you this good content that if you shoot it you keep the content mm -hmm. if you don't sell it and he goes yeah that's how it works and i go yeah but not in this case mm -hmm. and he goes well what do you mean i go well do you really believe you're going to sell it he goes absolutely 100 percent." i go then you would have no reason why you wouldn't sign that paper to give it back to me because you're going to sell it i yeah. go you have nothing to lose and he goes you know what fine i'll do it and he signs it 
Hands down, no lie, Mike will tell you, that was the best move that I ever made because he didn't sell it after a year. So a year went by when, by the time he sh- we shot it, then a year went by of him pitching it, and he didn't, he didn't sell it. So he turned around to me and goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't want to sign another contract. I want you to give me back the footage. I go, you had a year. You couldn't do it. Now it's time to move on. And he's like, really? I go, yeah, send me the master. So he's like, okay. He sends me the master. And I get the master, two years go by, and I'm really super depressed, right? So this is, I would walk into the office, and I'd hear my dad would be like, hey, son, how's that reality TV show going? <laughs> huh? It was Good, up, uh, up. Uh, you know what? He goes, I think I was eating pizza the other day. I might have seen a commercial for it. <laughs> son? And, and the pilot was so awful, do you remember? So, yeah, it was really, <laughs> oh my it, was, God. it was really long. It didn't uh, do a great, but I didn't know anything about television. Sure. These guys were the experts, so I relied on them. So I'm like, you know what? I mean, this is the big joke, and I'm, everybody laughs at it because on the show, you see me, I don't really work that hard. But I was telling people the reason why it wasn't selling is because I was working too hard at it. I was trying to sell it too much. Mm-hmm. I kind of relate it to like if you're single and you're looking for a girlfriend, you don't really find her. It's like when you're at the supermarket, you turn around and that's walking in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. I'm saying. So what I decided to do is take the disc and put it away and put it into a safe and just leave it alone. I figured if it's going to happen, you know, God will do his work, right? Mm -hmm. So six months go by, and all of a sudden I get a phone call out of the clear blue from one of my friends from college, and he's like, hey, what's going on, pal? How you doing? His name's Joel. He's like, I'm like, hey, buddy, what's going on? I haven't heard from you in a minute. What are you doing? He's like, I'm moving to Vegas. I'm like, oh, really? Can't wait to see you. So he comes to my house, and he's like, what have you been up to? I'm like, perfect opportunity. I go, I haven't seen him in a minute. Let's pull out the tape. (laughs) I go, I've been making a reality show. I go, but haven't really been too successful, uh-huh. but uh, let, me, let me show you what I got. So I put it in and I walk away and he's laughing. He's having a good time. He's like, wow, you got a hit TV show. And I went, yes, one person, <laughs> finally. And we're still, we're still telling him he's not. Finally. He's, he's oh, yeah, still real. telling me that yeah, it's, it's not crazy. reality. It's That's, two years of just. And then again, he does come to me almost every day. Watch, there's going to be a line. Wait, just wait, just wait. wait. And I go, okay, bro, okay, whatever. Well, okay. well, Mike, how does this get to Animal Planet? Oh, it's coming, it's coming. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So Joel, over the years, is has been grown up with Mike. They grew up together as kids. Yeah. Mike and I and Richie, we've all been friends over the years through Joel. That's how we met, and we've known each other through the years. So Joel, I put it in, he laughs, he laughs, and he's like, oh, my God, you got a hit TV show. He goes, what have you been doing with it? I'm like, honestly? Nothing. <laughs> and he's like, well, guess what? He goes, I want to send it off to my friend Mike. And Mike uh, works for Fox News. He's a general manager over there or an executive producer. And uh, we want to send it to him and see what he thinks. So we send it off to Mike. Mike gets it. And Mike watches it. And Mike calls me up and he's like, you got a hit TV show. And I went, yes, two people. <laughs> oh, Dude. listen to me. So you got to understand, we're making headway no, now. exactly that <laughs> way. But yeah. Yeah, 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 similar. Yeah, 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 right? Right. Right. No, it right. didn't go that way? Somewhat. How did you get it? You got it from Joel, didn't you? No. Yes. You no. did, right? No, yes. No, yes. But then, when you, then you take it and you go to Animal Planet and say, hey, guys, this no, is No, no. Then show. you went to Nancy, right? No, no, no. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And everybody comes to me and tells me, they should be on TV. They should have a hit reality show. <laughs> My mechanic stuck. tells me that he should have a reality show. Look at crazy Jose in the back doing the oil changes. I mean, everybody wants to be on TV. Uh, but uh, no, no, what, what, what Brett's saying is accurate uh, with Joel and getting me the, the uh, DVD and, and the pilot. But um, what uh, ended up happening was I took a look at it and... I was very fortunate to work with a lot of, of great, talented people. And one of the guys that I worked with uh, was a guy by the name of Marvin Himmelfarb. And Marvin was, your younger uh, audience won't remember this, but he was the head writer for a guy by the name of Aaron Spelling. Oh, Back sure. Love yeah, Bowl, of Fantasy Island days. The yeah. whole Tory Spelling's dad. Yes, Tory Spelling's dad. And uh, I showed it to him, and I said, Marvin, I really like this idea. There's nothing on TV like this. It's a build show, but no one has ever gone into this genre. What do you think? And Marvin looked at it in about 15 <laughs> seconds, looked up to me, and he said, you have got to do this show. So, yes, Brett, Brett is a- accurate uh, uh, as far as... So I tell the shorter version. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so. I tell the dumbed-down version. So you, you, you get a deal, the so, show is signed, and we're off to the races then. Well, actually, yeah. it, it was so... And not that quick. So I, I, my, yeah. my version yeah. of it, here's exactly. my version of it. Here's my version of it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so Mike then goes into partnership with, with Nancy Glass, correct? Is that what we'd we call it? We hired Glass Productions, my business mm-hmm. partners, Rich Bennett and Eric Salzman, um, took the pitch uh, actually to another older friend of ours, um, Meredith Bennett, who was um, the uh, executive producer for the Colbert Report, 
uh, of, of, of many different shows. Um, and she said, look, you should talk to Nancy. And I'd worked with Nancy Glass in the past. Mm-hmm. But she had an established production company. And I said, look, take a look at this. Tell me what you think. I know that you're doing a lot of shows. And uh, she absolutely loved it. She came in, redid the pilot, mm-hmm. and then... Uh, right, so I always tell the version okay. of it. So my version on stage, when I tell people my story, I always go, Mike went into a partnership with a lady named Nancy. Nancy was on, you know, Inside Edition. She's the one that interviewed mm-hmm. Jeffrey Dahmer, okay? Mm-hmm. And she used a big name in the, in the entertainment industry. And I get a phone call one day, and it's Nancy. And she's like, oh, my God, Brett, I love your show. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. You're going to be such a big star. And I'm like, okay, Nancy, so what do we got to do? She goes, well, first, she goes, first off, the first pilot, it was way too long. We need to recut it, edit it down, add new music, and then forget it. It's sold. So I'm like, all right, you know, I said, let's hope so. So she cuts it down. And let me tell you something. I got to give her credit where credit is due. They made that video that was silver, Mm -hmm. and they turned it into platinum. 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 So, I mean, when you watched it, you Mm -hmm. just were on the edge of your seat. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just... You were hooked. Everything everything that I ever dreamed of was in that 20, (laughs) in that two-minute pilot that they created, that five-minute, whatever it was. Everything that I could ever imagine was in that pilot. And I knew in my... Sizzle reel, whatever you want to call it. I knew in my heart that we were selling it. Like that, I was like, oh my God, it's a winner, right? And I swear, <laughs> th- two weeks, three weeks later, um, we get a phone call? Two, two years. You two, think it was that long? Two, no, from the time we... Two, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Two weeks? No, 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 no. Mike, two, right. years from, two years from... Two years from the time that they... Not when they saw the pilot. From two years from the inception of yes. when you came to me. Yes. And we put it together and we reformulated and went out pitched the show, brought Nancy Glass yes. in. Yeah, it was about two Okay, so years. so maybe it was two, well, the show got started in what, 11? We started, we finished, we started, we launched in 11, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so no, technically 10. no, 10. 10. Because 10? We did I, five I came episodes on, in 10. Yes, I came on in 07, 09, and then you, after, I, list, I was literally there, maybe there a month or two when he came up with this idea, and I'm like, what well, well, because do you remember they do? split production yeah, exactly. companies in the beginning? Yes. They had... Animal Planet yes. had their people on yes. at first, yes. and then Nancy kind of had like a split yes. crew. Well, that's usually so, standard. Uh, uh, most networks will hire a production right. company to do the show. So nine ten is when it started, kind of. But I, I had heard, I had heard through season. going to all these like events that we had gone to, how it actually went in the inner workings of Animal Planet. How uh, the, the I forget the girls, the talent girl that got it, and then she went down the hallway, and she was like, Jennifer. they were looking for an aquatic show. So most shows, they don't get greenlit right away. They mm-hmm. go through, like, what's it called when they... Well, they have a sheet, and they'll do their call sheet, mm-hmm. and they'll have specific genres that they're looking to find a show on, whether it be another HGTV show, another cooking show, and they'll pass them around, and they'll tell the production companies that they work with on a regular basis, look, we're looking for a show like this, we're looking for a show like that, and by chance, Nancy had pitched Animal Planet, and they were, here was the reel and the pitch... And they said, wow, we are looking for a show very similar to that. And then they said they give us six episodes right away yeah. without even – what's the, they usually put it in front of like people to look at to see if it's going to be successful. A test audience? Or, and right. they, they, they bypassed that because they were so excited about the show. And then we came out the first year with six episodes. And then I don't think there was – maybe one season we got 15, but every other season after that we got 20-plus. Wow. Yeah, it was for eight years. A lot. So we shot, you know, almost – figure we were on TV for eight years. We shot 156 episodes. It's almost 20 episodes a year. Which goes back to your first question about why did the show technically end or go on hiatus. Thinking about a show which really never had a break, Mm -hmm. runs for eight years on top of them doing their jobs, on top of the appearances that they're making, on top of of the book tours, the whole bit, it was nonstop. And if you look at any of the major network shows, uh, A Family Ties, A Modern Family, all these great shows, that you see that they come come to an end seven, eight, nine years in, Mm -hmm. and, and the audience looks at it and says, why? It's a tremendous toll to do a show like that continually. Mm-hmm. And I think there just was a lot of burnout. Yeah, there was. Yeah. And, and you know what? You know what else people don't realize is that when we first started the show season one, this is brand new. We had no, no one idea. had any idea we of what green. to do. Yeah. No so, so we went from shooting a show, let's say six episodes, took a year to make. <laughs> yeah. A year. Maybe even longer, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly. But then as we started improving, like we were shooting full seasons in like 140 days, 135 days. So we, we knocked it down from like 
tremendously, but that's because we only gained more experience. I mean, there was a lot, you know, people just don't realize how much it takes to make a, an actual show. You're not like building that. a tank in 60 minutes. No. <laughs> no, you should see all the sleeping shots on planes. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. was the demand, too, from the network. The, d the demand came from the network. Said, look, we need more shows. The advertisers are screaming. Mm -hmm. we, we, we would start out a season with 15 shows. Can you do 17? Mm -hmm. Can you do 18? I think we physically, we physically, 22, 23, 23, 22, 23, I think. And we did what they called repack shows, mm -hmm. which they would basically have Brett and Wade and Agnes and, and the rest of the gang in front of a green screen talking about, oh, remember the Christmas episode? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. We did that tank. So they would try. I mean, there was, I think the most we had were 27 shows, but about a half repacks. dozen of those were repacks. Yeah. But that's a tremendous stress. But it also goes to the tremendous following that the cast had. It was just amazing. And we also, a lot of, you got to take into fact, a lot of our crew, like our camera guys were there from the beginning. Wow. They were, they became, everyone became family. This was like when this ended, not, not ended, it was a hiatus. Obviously, like all of us needed just to kind of get away and just take a breather. But it was like um, losing a family. I mean, it was just like you didn't see these, you saw, I saw these people every day. For twelve years, well, you know, day you in and day out, you, you and live. Then, you live with them. You, you literally live wake them. up. You sleep yes. in the same hotels with yes, them. You know, you're waking up in the morning for breakfast with yes. them. You're you're working with them. You're, How many people on the on the crew did you guys have? You know, fifteen probably with all the sound guys, yeah. the camera guys, the APs, the PAs. There's all different little you know, languages. The EPs, you know. So I we see you guys yeah. flying to LA to pick out fish for a client. Yeah. These are the same guys that are flying yeah. out with you. Most of the time, it's been like what, it, they've they've been consistent crew. Like mm -hmm. obviously, we've had people come and go, but. It's mainly there. They were like this. It was the same crew, and so they became our family. And they did. They really they did. did. We had so many good times. It was. Well, yeah. it, it was the most experience for me. I'm sure for you as well, and for everybody. It was an experience that many of us, many people, don't get to have ever in their life. Well, the this one was thing, a unicorn. The, the one show. thing that I yeah. absolutely. absolutely. The one thing that I tell everybody that it was most important to me. It's legacy, right? Yeah. The long story short is is my grandkids, my great grandkids and so forth and so on are going to be able to watch 156 episodes of me doing something special for the aquarium hobby, right? What we did for the aquarium hobby. I mean, we get thanked, you know, all day, every day, people thank us for what we've done. I've had people walk up to me going, your show saved my business, you know? So that was great. A lot, the show brought a lot of good memories, a lot of good things that I wouldn't trade, you know, mm -hmm. for the world. But I just want to say one thing. We go back to what we talked about earlier about, you know, when the show came about. So I, my dad was like the non-believer, right? Mm -hmm. So we get the contract, right? <laughs> and I get it in my hand. I'm like, yes, we get the contract. Like I'm running in, dad, we get the contract. And he looks at me and he goes, let me know when the money's in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Shocker. Oh, that, yeah right? Shocker. Yeah. But you know what was the worst? He had to admit. My, if you know my dad, it's hard to admit that he's wrong. All those years, I was like, so who invented the show, Dad? <laughs> who? Who, who, who? What was that? You what? You, you had believed in me? He's like, nah, yeah. you know, I mean, he tells the story, you know, so. But it was, it was honestly, it was, it was, uh, it, it, it was great. It was fantastic. You know, it, like she said, it was, it was family. The show itself was fun making. Mm -hmm. Um, Doing everything as a whole wasn't fun, mm. you know, uh, missing kids events, missing, you know, I have two kids, daughter 23, my son's, you know, 15, uh, missed volleyball games, missed graduations, missed my own grand opening party, you know, had a huge party planned. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about spent thousands of dollars on our own party, all kinds of people there, and we get stuck on a plane <laughs> and don't make it. They did. Wait and breakfast. Our grand opening for the season one. For season yeah. one, the grand opening. You missed we, it? we, we yeah. missed it. Yeah. Heather and I were up there drinking, having yeah. a blast, and those two were stuck on a plane. Stuck on a plane. So, <laughs> I mean, were. you know, people don't realize sleeping in. And when we first started, you know, the budgets were small. We slept in the dingiest of hotels. Mm -hmm. The food was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't like all. Glitz and glamour. Season three is when it started getting glitz and glamour. That's when it yeah. really started. You know, once we. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have one of the highest rated episodes ever in Animal Planet history. Um, and I think, right, it was like a .81 or Top something we did. show for the first five yeah. years, even those last... Uh Three years, we were in the top 20. And we, we put Animal Planet on the map. Oh, yeah. On a Friday night, who was watching Animal Planet? They still do to this day. People literally watch marathons from, uh, I mean, from other countries. On. They're still, they're still on. Yeah, how many, do you know how many different countries you guys are? Because you, you're still on YouTube. TV, you're on 90. I mean, probably. I mean, over 100 countries. I mean, but the show here in the U.S. is still on every day. 
uh, and they've run many marathons on Friday. So there's still a tremendous... But, yeah, uh, in other, but in certain countries, it's not finished yet. So people, that's why yeah, they, they think always lag. we're still... What's, yeah. what's funny is, is yeah. going to other countries and seeing yourself talk in their language. So <laughs> yeah. our show, what's gr- what was great about our show is what Animal Planet did is because the show was so successful, they didn't put... Um, they voiced it over, mm-hmm. so they didn't. They didn't just put the language on the bottom. They voiced it over, and because they voiced it over, it made the show really, really popular. <laughs> and it's also called different things yes. in other countries. So, like in Germany, it's called Aquaman. In well, um, Poland, which uh, is where I'm from, yeah. right? it's called Project Project Aquarium. Okay. So it's, I have a funny story with that I went to go visit my family uh, during Christmas, and we were all sitting together having dinner, and they had. Project Aquarium on, <laughs> and there I am with me and Brett doing our green screen, oh and I, sa- I it was it was just so funny because we're hearing ourselves in I'm hearing him speak Polish, Polish, and my family is right there, so I sat next to the TV, so it was me, Brett, and me, and took a photo. <laughs> it was it's just like a surreal moment to think like this is insanity, yes. right? Like we're, look look at where it's gone. When the, when when the show is on in, in Poland and they're speaking Polish, right. is is the same woman that's doing your voice for the entire? How, do they? Do you have any say in casting that, or you kind no. of sign no. the rights no. over no. Yeah. to whoever's going to do no. your voice? Yeah, no, but it's a trip to hear him speak Polish. Yeah, yeah. French. Yeah. 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 Myself, such a smart man. French. In, <laughs> in, in, in one of the, in the Spanish countries, it's called. Uh, hasta esta cuello, like something like water up to the yeah. neck. It has like a different name, yeah. like in every region, yeah. right? Yeah. So we've traveled all over the world, you know, and people see us. But the 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 most defining moment of, I think, when I really started feeling like it was an international star, believe it or not, uh-huh. was when Wade and I were in Chengdu, China, and we were at the Panda Park. And we're at the Panda Park, walking around the Panda Park, checking it out and looking. All of a sudden, there's a, a choir from uh, Norway there, and it's all kids. And all of a sudden, like they're practicing and they're rehearsing, and you could see a couple of kids start talking. The next thing you know, they start talking to the next kids. They stop talking. The teacher says something. They stop. They all start running over towards us. And they were like, oh, my God, you're our favorite celebrity of our favorite TV show, and I cannot believe that we're in China seeing you guys. Like, it's the most surreal experience. And it was like 50 kids, and they were all just going crazy. We took a picture with them. I mean, it just it became really surreal. You know, that's internationally. When it became real here in the States, the first show aired, I will never forget this. I wake up in the morning, and it was right around sometime in August of 2011. August 2011, first episode. 2011, and school was getting ready to start in September here in Vegas, and I turn around to my daughter and my son, and I go, our lives episode aired on Friday night, and Saturday I was taking my kids shopping, and I said... Our lives are now going to be changed after last night's episode. I said, people are going to recognize us. And you've got to remember, now this is 2011, and we're, it's 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. My daughter is 13, and my son is 4. So at the time, they're like, ah, whatever, you know, I don't believe you. So my daughter, who had comprehension, we go into the store. And we first store we walk into was, I'll never forget, it's Tilly's uh-huh. on, at Boca Park. Sure. And we go to, in, and as we're walking out of the car, the kid goes, Mom. There's that guy from TV last night. And I look at my daughter and I go, oh my God, what I tell you? I go, the first person, I can't believe it. We go into the store and people are talking about me. And I'm like, Phew. and then someone goes, Brett. And I turn around and I'm thinking, I know the person. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, I saw you on TV last night. And that's when it really became like ultra real. And my kids were in shock. Well, we have so much to talk about with this podcast, and that's a great point to, to wrap up episode number one, because we have so, I mean, we have 158 episodes, 153 episodes to cover. I think that was a great foundation, a, a way to wrap up. Going fishing with Brett Raymer from Tank. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. This yeah. was fun, actually. Well, that was good. <laughs> See you next time. See you next right. time.